Teching 101 Leap Day Tumble. Haha! <laughs> it's. That's hold on. February 29th, everybody! Oh, it's a glorious day! You only get to celebrate this day once every four years, so take it in. I want to take a very special moment here to wish everybody born on February 29th a very special happy birthday. Because these poor souls only get one birthday every four years. They deserve to have this celebrated. You gotta feel bad for February, you know? February is like that one month that really wants to be like all the other ones, but just fails constantly. But that one year, every four years, that one day, it tries its hardest and still fails. And we've all been there, I feel. So it's a very applicable day. All right. Let's celebrate with uh, Smoothie's boobs. That sounds like a good idea to you? All right, good idea to me. Today, we're gonna be talking about, move this 29 over here, that, that's better. I'm gonna talk about um, the Big Mom Wano crew, all right? In the anime, this is very topical because Big Mom has just arrived at Wano Kuni. Um, and in the manga, we don't really get much more information by that point. Like, so what happens is Big Mom tries to get into the country. Uh, King kicks the Big Mama Shanter, the Queen Mama Shanter over the falls. The ship does not capsize. It manages to, like, steady itself, probably because it's a homie. But Big Mom herself gets thrown from the ship and washes ashore. And that begins her little adventure with Chopper and, you know, Okiku and uh, Tama and everybody there. However, what about the rest of Big Mom's crew? Well, we do get to see them like one more time, basically in the border of Wano, just questioning what they should do now that, you know, Mama is uh, missing in action here. Um, eventually, Big Mom uh, forms an alliance with Kaido, and even though we have not seen her crew since then, it's implied that because of the alliance, Big Mom's crew and Kaido's crew, the Beast Pirates, are gonna, you know, intermingle together and they're gonna be like, alright, I, I guess we're working together on this operation and we'll find out what's happening you know after we get done with this flashback um also keep in mind there's not going to be any one piece this week oda is unfortunately ill or uh, actually rather i think he was ill a little while ago because he makes the chapters a couple of weeks in advance so there there is a gap in chapters this week so that's on break and then next week we'll get back to it um so don't know if this might be the last chapter of the flashback coming up or we might still have a few i have no idea but it's wrapping up soon just trust me i i feel like it's going to be over pretty soon okay so here's the question though uh we do have a lot of beast pirates we would love to see get into action and stuff but we also have some members of the big mom pirates that we didn't really get to see in battle as much as we would have liked to during Totland. um a prime example of that is smoothie's boot i mean smoothie because oda has come out and said multiple times involving smoothie like she's really strong i wish i would have gotten to do some more stuff with her uh we got to see some of her abilities you know when she you know sucked the moisture out of the ocean to grow giant size and shoot a Getsuga Tensho at the Sunny. Um, she's pretty cool. Okay, so she's there, as long with uh, Pero Sparrow, the eldest son, uh, Compote, who's the eldest daughter. We didn't get anything from Compote. Ah, that, that face. I don't, okay. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna push you aside here. Okay. Never show me that face again. That was like, that was very judgy. That was like, uh, that was like my seventh grade English teacher being like, you didn't get this assignment done correctly. Uh, my seventh grade English teacher was a man, by the way, but he kind of resembled this, so we'll just roll with it. Um, so yeah, Compote's there, Paris Bear's there. Um, I have an entire list of all of the people so far that we've seen are in Wano. Now, this might not be a complete list because the Queen Mama Shanter is like a big uh, vessel. It's like Big Mom's flagship, so there might be other members that might have been there and we didn't get to see them quite yet. Um, the ones that are conspicuous in their absence, though, that I'm pretty sure are not in Wano are Katakuri and Cracker. Uh, Snack as well. We'll throw Snack in there just because Snack used to be a sweet commander, but as for a full list, here we go. Smoothie, Pero Sparrow, Daifuku is there, Oven so far is not. So Oven is probably still on the island. Uh, he might still be banged up from being run over by, you know, Beiji's giant ship. So maybe he stayed behind. Daifuku is there, though. Zucato, uh, Bascart, uh, Montdor is there. Tablet, the guy that rides around, the little short guy that rides around on a giant sheep or whatever that thing is. Uh, Mobile, who's a member of the Longarm tribe. Raisin, who I'm actually really excited for just because Raisin is this really serious dude. He's got a scrunched face because he's a Raisin. But he, he knows how to use... Uh, armament hockey and he combines it with his swordsmanship so i'm interested in seeing what raisin has to you know display here uh compote i mentioned f f f f f f, f lee 
that's that's my best shot at that word. Galette, who's Butter Girl, uh, Poyer, who is uh, Galette's younger sister, and then Flampe. Who? <gasps> Flampe is there. <gasps> I forgot about her. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. Look. Look. <laughs> We've all had a lot of rage around Flampe, right? Right? I'm not the only one, right? Okay. Look, I'm not saying I'm hoping she dies in the arc. Yeah, that is a little bit brutal. She's only like 15 years old. But I am saying this, like, in the battle... If someone wants to, like, pop Flampe like a balloon, because she's got that giant balloon dress, if Flampe, like, charges into battle, and then somebody just, like, like, Zoro just pokes her with a katana, and then she just deflates and just, like, a balloon, and just flies away and just lands, like, hits a mountain, and is severely injured from here on out. That would be something that I'd be, okay, let's roll with that, right? You know, oh my god, I would love for, like, um, her to go up against Luffy. Like, I'll take, you know, uh, this is revenge for earlier Straw Hat, you know, knocking me out with Conquerors and, and for shattering my worldview of Katakuri, Luffy, I'm gonna take you out. And then Luffy just looks at her and with his new powers, he just, like, doesn't even need to do the big burst of Conquerors. He just needs to, like, have a side eye of her and then she immediately just gets passed, out, like, Puck! and then gets knocked out like that, alright? But yeah, Flampe is there. Ooh. Um, oh, we also get uh, Brule's younger sister, Charlotte Broye, I think, is that? I apologize for mispronouncing any of these words. Um, but yeah, she is there as well. We see her later on when the Big Mom crew is kind of having that meeting, okay? So, a lot of those that I mentioned probably not going to be focused on too much. Like, I don't think we're going to be getting a lot from Zucato. I'm sorry. I know you all wanted to see the 11th son, the minister of uh, gin or alcohol. No, he's like the minister of alcohol at Gin Town. I, I know you were all expecting some stuff from Zucato uh, or Mobile or Tablet, but probably not going to get that much stuff from them. So let's focus on the major players here. Let's focus on Mont d'Or, uh, Galette. She has the butterfruit that was like explained in an SBS. Smoothie, of course. Paris. Sparrow, absolutely. Uh, Compote, I would love to see some stuff from her. Um, Broye, maybe, just because she is Brule's younger sister, and Brule was, like, a major character in the Totland arc. Maybe not, like, a major character, but, like, she she showed up quite a bit, right? They sort of have, like, a uh, like a fantasy fairy tale motif going between both of them, where uh, Brule is, like, the cursed sister, and uh, Broye is, like, the, um, you know, like, the fairy princess kind of archetype, right? So we might see some stuff from her. So, of course, Zoro, Usopp, Frankie, and Robin were not present on Totland, so they don't really know anything about Big Mom's crew or the Sweet Commanders. They never fought against anybody. It would actually be kind of really cool to see them go up against uh, Big Mom's crew. Now, of course, Wano is Kaido's home turf. It's Kaido and Orochi's home turf, so they have all their forces already gathered there. So all of the Beast Pirates, the Headliners, the Tobiropo, the Six Flying Headliners, the Calamities, the All-Stars, you know, plus Kaido himself, you know, they're all there ready to go. There's not as many of Big Mom's forces, but, you know, if we're going to have this alliance between Kaido and Big Mom, it just makes sense that Big Mom's crew is going to fight alongside Kaido's as well. Now, I am, I am under the uh, belief that the alliance is eventually going to break down. There's going to be some point during the battle where Kaido and Big Mom are going to argue back and forth between each other. Maybe Big Mom might have another hunger pang in the middle of battle. That would be, like, the worst possible thing. Um, you know, maybe it might be something like, uh, it might be something like the Beast Pirates don't get along with the Big Mom crew, and then they start arguing and fighting against each other, and then it's like mom and dad are arguing, it's like, hey, 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 get your kids off of mine, hey, hey, no, 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 you tell your kids to get the hell back from mine, you know, like, and then they start fighting like an old married couple, like, that would actually be really funny if that happened, okay? So, the, the alliance is gonna break down at some point, but before that, it's probably gonna be this overwhelming force, a force that the Marines themselves were absolutely terrified of, an alliance between two Yonko, Kaido and Big Mom, were working together could literally bring about the end of the world if they could actually set aside their differences and work together in tandem. That's really scary, okay? So you don't have the full forces of Big Mom, but you got some of her heavy hitters here. The first thing that popped into my mind, because hashtag not a furry, of course, is I want to see Carrot fight Paro Sparrow. Maybe not just Carrot. We can throw in Wanda. We can throw in some other minks as well. I want to see Carrot 
fight against Pero Sparrow because that was the guy that Pedro tried to take out with his final attack. And I know Pedro had other, you know, he was also trying to free the Sunny from the candy. You know, he took out his his antimatter or whatever the hell he, he wired himself up with because that explosion was huge, right? There's nothing left of Pedro now. But he, he managed to get the Sunny freed, but he also tried to take out Pero Sparrow and it resulted in really just, you know, he took off his arm. He, he you know, Oda went the Kubo route there where it's like, any sort of really large explosion like holy crap did it damage him is like eh, I'll just rip off his arm it'll be fine so Perospero lost an arm to Pedro and it doesn't really matter at the end of the day because Pe uh, Perospero has the candy fruit he can just reform his hand with candy and honestly the biggest downside of that um, power is that Perospero was like Every time I go to drink my afternoon tea and my hand melts a little bit from the heat of the tea, you know, because I have a candy hand, you know, I will remember you, Pedro. Like, that's kind of a minor inconvenience, all things considered, when Pedro gave his life! <laughs> it's okay, Pedro. It's okay. I bequeath this happy birthday cupcake to you. Right, so I would, I would like to see Carrot you know, stare down Pero Sparrow and be like, look, Pedro gave himself to finish you off, and the fact you're still breathing is in and of itself a dishonor to him. I'm gonna finish this. <laughs> you know, Carrot gets serious. She gets Maniac Bunny. She goes Su Long. You get, like I said, get Wanda in there too. Get Wanda going Su Long. Get like, uh, uh, get BB, get Rhodey, get those other Guardians in there. Get them going Su Long and then just have them jump Pair of Sparrow. Like, for the honor of our fallen comrade, you will fall. You know, Pedro, Pedro went to the grave thinking two things. Right before he pulled that switch, he was thinking, all right, guys, I'm going to save you guys. I'm going to free the Sunny from that candy so you can get away. And I'm going to take this, uh, this, this giant tongue bastard out so you don't have to worry about him anymore. Those were probably the last few things in his mind. He was also probably thinking about like the dawn of the new world, you know, carrot, follow your dream, all that bull crap. But he was thinking like, this is my final act and it's going to do something, you know, it, it's going to matter. And it kind of half did, but that the point is carrot's going to pick up that remaining 50%. All right. He's like, all right, half of it succeeded. The other half is on us. All right. So I think Pero Sparrow and plus Pero Sparrow's death was also kind of implied during Totland whenever he was lying to Big Mom and Big Mom's like if I if I get that you're lying I'm gonna end you it doesn't matter if you're my son or not so Pero Sparrow's death's been implied a few times I would like to see him get taken out all right now um Daifuku now I don't know if it's just because they have very similar um designs but which straw hat do you think uh should fight Daifuku that's right Frankie yeah, Frankie and Daifuku, when you look at them side by side, and Frankie, of course, wasn't in Totland, so you didn't even I didn't even realize at the moment, but you put them side by side, and they have, like, very muscular builds, short cropped hair, um, Frankie does not rock the mustache. Does Frankie's magic button hair apply to facial hair as well? Oh, that's a whole new realm I never even figured before. But no, maybe. Daifuku's got the mustache, but he's also got the giant balls. He's got the giant orbs on his shoulders. Now, with Frankie, they're more practical because they house, like, rockets. You know, there's, like, like little missile launchers in there. But they look very similar. I would actually kind of like to see them fight. And also, just because Daifuku uses the Hoya Hoya no Mi, the Puff Puff fruit, which, you know, it, it allows him to create a genie. The genies are sort of seen as, like, magical creatures, you know, like magical entities, spirits, guardian deities, or whatever, um, that would actually be really cool to see, like, magic versus science. The science of cyborg technology! Nipple lights! <laughs> you know? Um, I would like to see that. I really like to see that, too. Um, I thought for a moment a little bit, because Carrot did have a, a back and forth with Daifuku a little bit there, you know, when she first went Sulong to fight against Daifuku's fleet, and maybe Daifuku has a bit of, um, of a vendetta against Carrot for that reason, for, like, wrecking his entire fleet. But I think more so than anything, Carrot needs to fight against, uh, Perispero. That's, that's, uh, that's the Minx fight. Because Carrot would, of course, tell Wanda and all the other Minx about Pedro's sacrifice, 
what actually the circumstances were for that and who was the one he tried to take out. He's like, all right, we got to take care of that. But Daifuku, just with his appearance and with the fact that like, I'm going to use a giant... Wouldn't you love to see Frankie fight against a giant genie? Um, and with Daifuku as well, when Jinbei was kind of explaining all of the crews, like their the strongest members, um, he does mention Daifuku as like, yeah, he could create a genie and the genie's really strong. Um, the genie clashed with uh, Sanji very briefly there. Like that, like that, that demon cut thing he did. He had that giant like a uh, halberd thing that he used to fight with or that pole armed weapon. So yeah, that, that would actually be really cool. I could see an image of like Daifuku summoning the genie and then Frankie launching a bunch of ballistic missiles at the genie and the genie gets like blown up, but then it just reforms with smoke and he's like, hoo, hoo, hoo. and Frankie's like, oh, okay, this is, this is different, right? This is a different kind of battle. Um, and then all the while Daifuku's like rubbing his, cause he has to keep rubbing his stomach in order to get the genie to stay out. So I, I could see some back and forth there. That would be really cool. Um, Compote. So we don't really know anything about Compote. Uh, she didn't really fight at all in the final arc. She was more of just there, uh, I think, alongside, like, Mont Dor at, like, the communication center when Mont Dor was setting up all of his books to communicate across Totland. I think Compote was there. I don't think she ever jumped into the battle in any major way. We don't know if she has a devil fruit. We don't know how good she is, like, if, like in battle, period. Um, you know, it might be some deal, like, you know, like, okay, so, like, Flam Pei does not have a devil fruit. She just has that like giant balloon outfit that she wears. So it's like some kind of like a device or some outfit. Maybe Compote's like fruit hat manages to. I, I don't know how it would work. You just like, behold, my my devil oranges, my evil apples will attack you. And like the fruit comes like she's like, I don't know why I'm picturing her as a psychic right now, but like she's like summoning her fruits and like attacking I, I, the fruit, fruit, fl fl uh, blah, blah. the fruit, fruit, fl fruit. I, I, yeah, yes, yes, the fruit. Fruit, fruit, fruit! It's gonna be the fruit, fruit, fruit! I guarantee you that that would be hilarious. We already had the berry, berry fruit from uh, Captain Berry Good, so we need to have a fruit, fruit, fruit. Absolutely, I would love to see compote. But more than anything, hey, listen, she's the eldest daughter. And she also went along with Big Mom to Wano. I would imagine she would probably have to be pretty decent in a battle if Big Mom literally... Like, you have to imagine, okay? Big Mom was at Totland after everything went down. She was having that conversation with Kaido over the Den Den Mushi. Like, you know, Straw Hat's going to Wano. He's mine. Don't touch him. And Kaido's like, screw you, you old bag. The second that Straw Hat a dick <laughs> crosses my border, he's all mine. And Big Mom's like, Mom! I'm coming and you better also have my child support you old you old coot and so she shows up But she's like all right. All right screw this everybody mama 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 We're going to Wano to see Kaido and everyone's like whoa really mama and he's like yeah now get on the boat We're going you know and so she brings smoothie she brings Perospero she brings Daifuku she brings Mont d'Or Galette and also compote so I'm assuming there's a reason for that all right um, if we're just going to assume that Katakuri and Cracker stayed behind to guard the country or maybe nurse their wounds a bit, um, and snack as well, fine. But Compote went, so I'm waiting to see something from her. It is kind of weird that we didn't get to see anything from the eldest daughter, right? Um, Montor and Galette. All right, so Montor, like I said, he spent most of the last arc, uh, at, at, like, the final battle with the Tea Party and everything. After that, he was basically just the communications officer, manning the phones and, like, the, you know, the, between the different fleets and stuff. So, we didn't get to see him too much. We got to see him during the Enraged Army when he fought against Luffy. His fruit is very strong, allowing to people, like, like trap them in that book dimension. It's like in that, the world of their mind. You know, when you get, you know, enraptured by a good book and you just just get sucked in like that's the point of his power by the way i'm up to cha page uh, just a little bit of a check on uh, harry potter here i'm on chapter 19 the lion and the serpent you know uh, page 397 so we're all we're about halfway there it's like 800 pages we're about halfway through order I'm really enjoying it harry's kind of you know a moody teenager more so than in the movie but we're, we're enjoying this so that's mont Dor's ability to trap people in books okay very useful in terms of combat um 
you know, I, I could imagine him going up against pretty much anybody in Wano and then being freaked out by that, being trapped in that book dimension. Uh, that'd actually be really cool because, yeah, Kaido's crew has the smiles and everything, but they're mostly limited to zones. It's, you know, Kaido of the 100 Beast Pirates, right? But then you have Big Mom's crew that are mostly focused on Paramecia abilities that would really be, you know, like, just screwing with them. Like, it's easier to understand, like, hey, that's a guy that has the power of a rhino. You know, he's this large rhino gifter and he attacks you okay it's just brute strength but then you get the guy that can suck you into a book dimension and be like whoa what what devilry is this back back demons back you know so that'd be cool to see one of the scabbards go up against mont d'or um galette's ability is butter she's a butter girl which amazing figure for the butter girl i'm starting to think the treasure cruise images are accentuating the busts a little bit of these female characters i wasn't sure at first but then we get this, and I'm like, ah, I don't remember Galette being that busty, but she is now! And that's the substance that she used to, uh, whenever, uh, she was fighting Nami, and she, like, restrained Nami, so then Amande came up and, like, ripped open Nami's shirt and pulled out, um, Big Mom's Viva card. Yeah, that's, that's what she could do. So she can manipulate it, basically, as, like, a semi-solid. She can constrain people with it. Um, it's butter. She could probably also use it to make the battlefield really slippery, and you're sliding all over the place. Um, I guess she could force-feed it to you, and then you eventually end up getting super high cholesterol, and you get taken out of the battle that way. Um, but yeah, I mean, more than anything, just, you know, making weapons slippery or armor or the battlefield for the enemy slippery so they fall all over the place or using the butter to actually restrain them. That's what Galette can do. Uh, her little sister, the girl, uh, Poyer, with the, um, the panda mouth, uh, we don't know what's up with her, uh, but she's there as well, so she probably also has an ability in that regard as well, okay? So, that's Montor and Galette. Moving on now to, I think, the, the big one, the one that we're waiting for outside of Flampe. I've already talked about Flampe. Flampe. We don't need to mention Flampe again. The the member of the crew that's been in the background for far too long that we need to see some action from. I am talking about Charlotte Mobile. Yes. Yes. I believe he's the minister of tasting. Um, we need to see what he's all about. You know, he's got the pinstripe suit, but can does he have it where it counts is what matters. No, of course, we're talking about another long-lived human. We're talking about the long leg member Smoothie. Oh, yes, it's my goodness. I, I, I actually, more than anything else, I just wanted to do this video to talk about Smoothie, okay? By the way, just before we get to her, I wanted to give you a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a look into the design process for the thumbnail of this video. So the original thumbnail I had planned for this last night was going to just be Pero Sparrow on it. Here's Pero Sparrow. Big Mom's Wano crew, he's the first son, he's somebody everybody recognizes, there you go. But then I found those sexy Treasure Cruise images of Smoothie, and I'm thinking, alright, let's let's try to change the thumbnail so it's Smoothie and Parasparrow, and I'm just like, eh, it, it's just too much, you know, there's too much on, it just doesn't work. You know what, let's just make it Smoothie, okay? And then that's how we got the modern thumbnail that we see today, okay? So anyway, Smoothie, alright. So this is, this is Oda's time to shine. If nothing else, if we don't get anything, like, if, if Carrot and Wanda just beat the crap out of Pero Sparrow off panel, if Frankie has an epic battle with Daifuku and he just beats him in one attack, whatever. But Oda needs to focus on Smoothie however many times he hyped her up during the arc. He's like, hey guys, I'm sorry, I just, I had to get, you know, Luffy versus Katakuri, that was going on, all this other stuff with the Strats trying to escape, didn't get to focus on Smoothie too much. I'm like, okay, Oda, okay, but you're the one that brought this up, you're the one that mentioned her, like, being pretty strong, so you gotta deliver, man, you gotta, you wrote that check, you gotta cash it now, alright? So who is Smoothie going to fight? Zoro? That would be cool. I mean, Zoro, I feel, has to fight King. Uh, maybe Zoro fights King and then moves on to um, Kaido with, like, Luffy fighting alongside the Supernovas and everybody. Sure, 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 fine. Jinbe. That's who I want to see fight Smoothie. I'm pretty much locked into that. 
I'm not saying, I mean, like, I'm not saying it wouldn't have been cool for Zoro to fight Smoothie, or for Robin to, to fight her, or for Usopp to fight her. I mean, th that would be really cool. Awesome. Great. Um, we, we could have Usopp fight against, uh, like, uh, maybe a random member of the crew. We could have Usopp fight against Galette. Or we could have Robin fight against, uh, you know, um, uh, well, who's the other one that was major that I mentioned that I didn't- Montor. Yeah, we could have Robin- actually, no! Robin fighting Montor would actually make sense, because she's, you know, there's the bookworm of the crew fighting against the book guy. Okay, let's, like, okay, let's lock in with that. But I am dedicated to see Smoothie versus Jinbei, because Smoothie- out of all of the members that Big Mom brought, aside from herself, Smoothie is the strongest, right under her. She's the only sweet commander that we saw got brought with them, uh, unless Katakuri or Snack or Cracker shows up, but I'm pretty sure they don't. I'm pretty sure they're, they're back at Totland. Um, so, Smoothie is like directly under Big Mom. Aside from Big Mom, Smoothie has the highest bounty... Uh, for a woman in the, in the entire world of One Piece, so far that we're aware of, it goes Big Mom with the Yonko bounty, and then Smoothie's like 900 million. Okay, for for a female, that's a really high bounty. Okay, so um, Paro Sparrow is really strong too, but he's getting on in years, and Smoothie just is younger. She's got a lot more destructive power. Okay, so she shows up, she starts, you know, gigantifying herself, you know, sucking out the moisture of everybody, getting all giant, and remember, when she went giant before, when she went giant woman, she was on a boat, and her sisters were like, you know, big sis smoothie, you need to, like, not get too big, or you're gonna capsize the ship, and so she had to be careful there, but now, if we're all fighting on Onigashima, she can get as big as she wants, and she doesn't have to worry about capsizing the ship, she can move around freely, she can take out her sword, she can absorb to they're on an island, they can absorb the water, the moisture from the water, and then use those uh, attacks there, and she's just plowing through the freaking uh, battlefield, right? And it's like, holy crap, we gotta deal with Smoothie, but everybody else is preoccupied, like maybe Zoro is fighting against King, um, I would love to see Neko, Mamushi, and Inu Arashi fight against Jack, because Jack's the one that wrecked um, Zo, and so they had to defend uh, Raizo at the time, but it would be cool to see him fight against that. I would also really love to see, I wanna see Frankie fight Queen. Just cause Queen's like the like the, the biker kind of character with all the inventions that Queen created. I would want to see, you know, Frankie fight Daifuku, but I also want to see him go up against Queen. Maybe even like, maybe we have like a Daifuku fight beginning, and then Frankie and Usopp team up to fight against Queen. That would be neat. Because they're like the mechanical guys of the crew, right? So everybody else is preoccupied with other fights, and Smoothie's just plowing through the field, and everyone's just kind of like, okay... We, we, we have to send somebody strong to fight against her, okay? We can't just leave this to random samurai or random members of the heart pirates or whatever. You know, it, it has to be a strong opponent because she's pretty powerful, right? But everybody else is preoccupied, and then boom, at the last minute, you know, she fires off like a giant water jet that's just gonna shred everybody, and then Jinbei shows up and uses, like, WATER HEART! And then, like, knocks the, the water blade away. And then, like, I think their powers would be comparable to each other because, you know, Smoothie's power is, you know, liquid Liquidation. Um, you know, the, uh, she absorbs the moisture or the liquids out of certain objects or, um, you know, people or the ocean, and then she uses that to grow stronger, like a sponge or launch attacks, and Jinbei controls, you know, he can control water currents and water itself a little bit, you know, with his Fishman Karate! And so he shows up at the last minute and fights against Smoothie. We could have Jinbei have another fight afterwards. It's not like a one and done sort of deal. We can have Jinbei fight Smoothie and then it's a rough fight, but he wins and then he goes on to team up with Luffy and all the other Straw Hats and, you know, all the Supernovas are there, like Law's there and Kid is there and Killer's there and they all team up to fight against Kaido in like a final battle. We can have that too, but I want to see Jinbei show up and fight against Smoothie because of all the hype we've had for her and Jinbei, we've waited for him. We've waited for Smoothie for so long. We've waited for Jinbei for so long throw them together, plus Jinbei is aware of her abilities from being on the Big Mom crew for so long, he could actually counter her. Because all the other Straw Hats, like, even the ones like, like, Nami and Brooke, they were, you know, being chased by Smoothie, they got to witness what Smoothie was capable of, like, with the water jets, you know, dodging them, but they don't know everything about her abilities. Jinbei does. So that would be perfect to fight against. So I'm, I'm locked in with that. I'm gonna hope that Oda does that. Um, but yeah, so, so like I said, there's other members of the crew that are gonna be there, but they're, let's just be straight up, like Zucato and Tablet and Mobile, they're gonna be fodder, they're gonna be wiped out probably really soon, or just to, like, make a point, you know, the samurai are so strong, they slice down Mobile with one attack, or, or something of that nature, sure. Um, and like I said, I, if Oda really wanted to, he could show, oh, by the way, Oven was on the ship too, we just didn't see him, Oven's there now, I'm like, oh, okay, Oven's there, right? Kinemon fighting Oven, Fox 
Foxfire Kinemon versus against Oven with the Netsu Netsu, the Heat Heat Fruit? Sure, why not? I, I, I'm going to see it. Yeah, why not? Let's, let's give it to it, right? So... We'll see where this goes, but let me know below on who, which of the members of the Big Mom crew would you love to see go up against either the Straw Hats or the Samurai of Wano or the Heart Crew or anything like that. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Also, if you haven't seen it, um, Nux put out the video that I, I we, uh, me and uh, six other YouTubers, uh, well, I want to say we volunteered or, you know, we're giving him a favor, but <laughs> Nux is very persuasive, guys. But no, it was great. Uh, he got us all together, and we dubbed a bunch of funny lines from anime. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing it. A lot of other YouTubers had a lot of fun doing it. So go check out that video below, or I'll put that in a card right here, uh, the dub video. Thanks for watching, everybody. This will be Techie 101 signing out. Um, I wish I could give you all this cupcake, um, but I unfortunately cannot. So I just want you to stare at the cupcake and just imagine you eating it. But I want you to cry while you're doing it because of Pedro. <laughs> Pedro, why?